Uh, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud at the state of the UFC. You know, to see Dana up on stage at the election, um, I feel like that moment just elevated the whole sport. You know, Americans and people from around the world's like, who's the ballhead dude talking? You know, like that represents all of us. And I feel like even you guys as, as being MMA reporters, I feel like it puts you all on like a more prestigious level. That's how I genu gen genuinely feel. And so uh, to be here at Madison Square Garden, is it's like the fight capital of the world and to have the president possibly in attendance it's just it's it's all a huge honor uh to to have your face on the billboards uh in times square it just feels amazing you know um i was in vegas a few a few days ago and you know people people were treating me like absolute royalty you know and that's not that's it's just a different feeling in the air right now. Um, everyone cares about this fight, it feels like. Uh, there, there's a lot of fans that felt like this fight shouldn't have been the fight. Um, but from my point of view, it's, it's like one of the most prestigious things I've been a part of in my whole career, um, being the main event of the Garden. And, uh, and I'm, I'm grateful and I'm very, very honored for the opportunity to, to be in this position. And you've made it known when you have when you finally do have your opponent. You watch tape on them, so you know everything, all their ticks, all their why they step, why they throw hit kicks, why they block certain things. When you break down Stipe, a guy many people consider the greatest, it's usually between him, Kane, and DC as the most skilled heavyweights. Do you see him as the most skilled heavyweight the UFC has ever ever seen, and possibly the most skilled opponent you faced in the UFC? I think I think actually Daniel Cormier um, is probably the most skilled. You know his Olympic level uh, wrestling, his his dirty boxing, his boxing. Um, but Stipe's beat Daniel Cormier. Um, Stipe he deserves to be here, man. He he can wrestle. He always comes lean and in shape. He has great cardio, and uh, and he has that right hand. You know, whether it's the straight right, the overhand right, or the right uppercut, that's, that's his real weapon. That's his ticket. Um, <clears throat> we're very aware of that, and we're very prepared for that. And just last one for me. I, I remember when you were prepared to fight Gustafson the first time, all the questions were about Glover, because he had just kind of been on the rise. And then you fought Glover, and all the questions were about Daniel Cormier. Everyone was like, what are you going to do after Glover? Now everyone's talking about another guy not named Stipe. So I guess, why do you think that narrative has always followed your career? It's like fans and media never focus on the fight you have. It's always on the one they want to see next. You know, I don't want to sound arrogant, but I, I, I think what it is is being so good at what I do that, that uh, it's just almost never enough. Um, I'm very aware that, you know, that the Tom Aspinall is like, it, it's making more headlines than Stipe. And, and it's just the way that it is when, with me. Um, you know, when I win, there's always an excuse, well, oh, he really wasn't that well-rounded or, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's an interesting place to be in. Um, and it's hard to compare to any other fighter because I don't think any other, any other fighter in our sports history has, has ever had to deal with it. Uh, you know, I like, you know, I, I just beat Cyril Gain and, and we can go back in a time machine and hear the way that people talked about Gain, his athleticism and his speed. And I mean, what he did to Taito Tavasa and like, you know, and then as soon as I beat him, he's like, oh, well, he wasn't that, or he's this and like, so it's, it's a very interesting place to be in and, and, uh, and it just is what it is. John, with that narrative, you've obviously been having a little bit of fun with it in the lead up to this fight. You're saying quack, quack on Twitter, d addressing the duck things. What are those fans getting wrong? Why are you not ducking Tom Aspinall? What are they reading wrong about this situation? Okay, so um, I feel like narratives have been created that just truly aren't there. You can't duck a man that you were never scheduled to fight. It's like, it's like saying you got turned down by a girl who you never even hit on. You know what I'm saying? It's like me and Dana and Hunter have never sat down and, about, and talked about Tom Aspinall. He's never been on my radar. 
Never. Um, I mean, just a moment ago, he was, it was him and Sergey that, that was fighting. And Sergey could be in this position right now, and I would still be in the same place of, I've, I've beat people my whole career, and once I beat them, like the show just goes on. Like, like the France fans, the French fans were just all over my case, and, and I just beat their guy. And, and I, I find myself constantly in the same position of, oh wow, he, he, he just beat another guy. Like, what, what's next? You know what I mean? Like, when I beat Glover Teixeira, he was on a 20 fight winning streak. And uh, you beat Glover and then everything just moves on. So for me personally now, it's just like, I get that Tom uh, is an exciting fighter. I get that finally, after 16 years, we found somebody who's seven years younger than me and 30 pounds bigger than me. Like we finally found someone who may give me a great challenge. And everyone wants to see it so bad. But for me, it's like, what, what is it, what's in it for me? He, he changes nothing if I beat him. Beating Tom is just like beating uh, Surreal Gain. Has a whole country behind him, he's hot right now. What happens to me after I beat him? Nothing changes for me. So, so, so I'm not ducking Tom Aspinall. If I, if I failed to fight Stipe, I would be ducking Stipe because we contractually have been signed up to fight over a year ago. This is Stipe's position. The Tom narrative came out of nowhere. He won a belt and now he, suddenly I'm ducking him. I've never had negotiations to even fight him, if this makes sense. So the fans are just ignoring it. They're ignoring all logic and they just, I've finally found someone that they think can compete with me and everyone wants to see it now. I guess the clarifying question then is if Dana and Hunter do come to you after this fight, they make the figures make sense to you, would you then be open to fighting Tom Aspen or are you categorically thinking, he does nothing for me, I will not fight that guy? He does nothing for me. He does nothing for me. Um, if you're a person that wants to see me really challenged, then I get it, right? Like I said, seven years younger, like 35 pounds bigger than me, right? I get it. It's like, wow, this John's so good. We finally found someone way younger and way bigger than him. Let's see how he does it. Get that. I get that narrative. But for me, if you were my manager, if you were on my team, why not fight against Pereira, a guy who's the same age as you, and we walk around the same exact size? Right now, I had to eat a big breakfast because I'm getting underneath 235. Pereira walks around at like 240, and he has magnificent accolades. It, business wise, it makes more sense. Fight the, I'll, I'm gonna call him this, fight the nobody w that may be more dangerous or fight the guy with all the accolades who's incredibly dangerous, but it actually will affect your legacy. Me beating Cyril Gain didn't change anything for me, just gave me a few more millions. And it would be the same for Tom Aspinall, where when you look back and it's like, John just beat Alex Pereira. It's bigger, it's, it's just much bigger. And anybody who can't understand that logic simply doesn't want to. Last one for me, the gloves. It looks like we're switching back to the old UFC gloves after these new ones came in in June. Do you have any thoughts on that? Are you excited about using the old gloves and what is your opinion on that? I'm really excited about the old gloves. I got sent a pair of the new gloves uh, several weeks ago. I tried them on and I thought they were, they were tight. I, I used to fit in XL and in the new glove, I had to put on a three XL. Uh, the, the shape curving your hands like that, I, I, they were very uncomfortable for me. And, and I was actually really stressed thinking about how am I gonna go into fight week wearing these gloves that I, I don't even wanna train in. Uh, so when I got a phone call uh, recently, Hunter said, you know, everyone on this card are, are veterans. Why put a bunch of vets in, in a new glove? Let's give you guys all what you're used to. It was a major relief to my coach, Brandon, who wraps my hands. It was a major relief to me as well. John, over here to your right. Uh, so Dana calls you the greatest fighter of all time. Many people agree with, you, agree with that. I agree with that. That said, a lot of the other goats in other sports, Tom Brady, Usain Bolt, Simone Biles, those kind of people, they kind of sidestep the, the goat talk and, and but you like embrace it and you'll, you'll be online and, and you almost seem insulted if anybody says someone else's. Like why, why is it so important to you? You know, I, I don't know if I agree with me being insulted if, if they say anybody else's. Um, Dana, Dana definitely advocates for me. True. Um, I think more than I advocate for myself and, it, and it means a lot. Um, MMA is just a different sport. 
you know, like throwing a football is very tough. And I, I'm a massive Tom Brady fan. I'm a massive LeBron James fan and Michael Jordan fan. And you name all the greats in the other sports. But, but fighting transcends a lot. It's just different. I mean, you get billionaires in their office and, and you look in their office and they have pictures of Muhammad Ali. You know, you can be black, white, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, and, and, and people, people just look up to fighters differently. Um, it, it's, just, it's just a different, it's a different thing to wear. It's a different honor to have. It's a different badge to possess. And, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali himself, he, he went around and he said, I am the greatest, you know, and, and we, we remember that to this day. You know, I could walk around and say, I am the greatest. And you would know I was referencing Muhammad Ali. Um, and even Mike Tyson, you know, like with his greatness, it's, it's, it's a different, it, it, it's polarizing in a different way. And um, if I've gotten this close to be considered in that realm of conversation, then I might as well embrace it. And I might as well advocate for myself because because Jump. reaching this reaching this this uh, reaching this this level just doesn't come often. What I've done is a really special thing, and and uh, sometimes you got to be your own your own biggest cheerleader. And, and in this case, I I want to be that. I I want to stand up for that. My mom, who's not here anymore, she will want me to do that. Well, last one for me. Uh, I I agree that the Alex Pereira fight would be massive. Obviously, the accolades, I think, is a really strong argument you make. That said, I think one of the critiques people have is not that you picking Alex over Tom. It's the he, he doesn't deserve the fight me statement. When you compare his career at this point to when you got a title shot, he has more wins, more stoppages, more wins against ranked opponents, more main events. He's got the interim title. So what is your response to people saying, like, not that you, you take it Alex Pereira. I mean, that, gosh, the guy's amazing. Right. But, but uh, Tom doesn't deserve me comment. Well, maybe, maybe, I didn't, maybe I didn't phrase it right. Maybe I didn't phrase it right. You know, the, the truth is he does deserve uh, many great things in his life. And I, I wish him to have a magnificent UFC career. I really do. Um, I have nothing personal against Tom. Um, so maybe I shouldn't have said that he doesn't deserve, because he does deserve great things. What I'd like to see him do is go on and have a great career. You know, so, so many times people like to just try to go straight to the top, you know? And if, if we were in a business setting where he is and where I am, he wouldn't even, he wouldn't even be crossing paths with me. He wouldn't even be talking to me. You know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. Um, it's not about what Tom deserves or don't deserve. I believe it's what I do deserve. And after this many years with this company and all the work that I've put in, I believe I'm at a place where I deserve to be able to say, I don't want to fight that guy. I want to fight this guy. I want to fight that guy. And that's why i am be more than willing to relinquish the belt. I don't feel like I need the heavyweight championship of the world. I feel like what I've created for myself is almost bigger than belts. Um, to take a step back and say, hey, you become the heavyweight champion. Go ahead and let's see you become a 17-time champion. Or let's see you even beat Stipe's record. That's going to be hard for anybody to do. Um, but what I do feel like I deserve is the ability to just take a step back and say, hey, either I retire or I start fighting fights that make sense to my legacy. And Alex Pereira is the only fight right now that makes sense to my legacy. A guy who's young and, act, well, my age and active still and, and have something worthwhile to me. Fans around, fans around the world, a lot of people really want to see me lose. They really want to see me lose. To see me walk away with all the chips just irks people inside. And I'm glad to be in this position to walk away with all the chips. And, um, and, um, yeah, at the end of the day, Pereira, man, Pereira's worth risking it for me. It, it's, I don't know how many ways I can say it, but he just doesn't have the, the titles. You know, he can have finishing rate, high finishing rate and all that type of stuff, but he doesn't have titles. And when you have 17 world titles, it only makes sense to fight somebody on your level. And Tom Aspinall and Alex Pereira are not on the same level. Maybe they're both excitement, you know, excited. They have the same excitement level, 
But when it comes down to what, they've, what they are doing, they're not on the same level. And so for me, when I have belts and I have money and all that type of stuff, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the legacy stuff. Tom doesn't give that to me. Hype, I would shut up hype, but I've been doing that my whole life, is, is shutting up hype. Me, selfishly, I want, I want legacy. That's what I want. John, down here to your, down here to your right. Um, I know you're, sorry, I know you're undecided on retirement. And it seems in, with each passing interview, you're flip-flopping flip -flopping one way or the other. Um, but if you could reflect on your career, do you have any regrets or do you think everything has panned out the way that it's supposed to pan out? Mm, I, you know, I have many regrets. Um, I have many regrets, but at the end of the day, I'm very aware that the man that I am today it has turned out to be a pretty solid human being, individual, team player, neighbor. I mean, you name it, you name it. I, I'm really proud of the man that I am today. And I think everything that you go through in life, it shapes you. And I, I wouldn't have the wisdom that I have today if I hadn't gone through some of the things that I've gone through. So today I'm a very, very proud man of who I am today. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been a great career. I'm not sure if I answered your question. And as far as, and as, far as retirement, um, the idea for me is to go out there and beat Stipe. You know, how, how rude of, it, of us is it to just be completely looking past Stipe already? Um, so the main goal is to get past Stipe. And if I can do it in a really dominant, devastating fashion, then uh, the desire in my heart would be like, okay, now, now it's Alex Pereira. And if the UFC doesn't uh, want that to happen, because all, ultimately it's the boss's decision, then it won't happen. And, and I'll just move on with my life. Um, but that's the, one of the ways I look at it is, would you guys rather lose me or get one more super fight? And the only super fight that makes sense to me, not to everyone else, but to me and my team, is Alex Pereira. All right, and what would you say is your favorite moment of your career? Favorite moment in the career would be back in 2011. Um, the way that I felt uh, in Newark, New Jersey, uh, helping a couple who had just been robbed. You know, I went to school for criminal justice, and to be able to take someone down and subdue them until the cops come and then win a world championship just moments later, man, I felt like I got to use my power for the right thing twice that day. And uh, I'll never forget that day. That's probably the best moment in my career. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Great questions. Yeah. Well, you budger, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> my man right here, you're so patient. Yeah. About me or him? You, you. Thank you. you. Thank you. So my question is, my question is the question you have faced earlier, like years before. I just wanted to ask this on your, like, not the final chapter. I really hope it's not final chapter for you uh, in Octagon, but maybe in the middle of your final book. So the question sounds like this. Are you a bad guy trying to be good, or are you a good guy trying to be bad? How would you answer this question right now? So I've answered that question before in the past. It went pretty viral. Yeah, no. And, but I'll elaborate on that question. Um, some people are not going to want to hear this, but in the Christian faith, we believe that we're all born into sin. We're naturally, we're all sinners. Uh, the moment that Adam bit that apple in the, in the Garden of Eden, we all became kind of condemned to sin. And uh, the way Christianity works is it's a decision to accept Christ into your life and Christ to accept Christ into your heart. And so naturally, my nature is... is uh, of a one of sin, and that's all of us. And and uh, I believe that it's our job to uh, to try to do the right things and to try to walk in the light instead of the darkness. And so that's what I meant when I answered that question. I think we are all rotten at the end of the day and trying to do the right things. That's an amazing answer. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hey, John. Just quick. Just a quick one for you, man. And I I think. Uh, it's been great. I, it's like your answers have seemed really honest, and it's like, yes, Alex Pajero, from a business standpoint, makes more sense than Tom. And I also thought it was great that you were like a guy seven years younger, thirty pounds heavier. You know, like I get it. Why fans want to see it? 
and maybe some fans want to see you lose, but I also think fans just want to see you like really challenged. Like, like they see you as like, you're this greatness and we want to see greatness challenged. Like a lot of people, their favorite fight of yours is, is Alexander Gustafson, you know? So is there still a part of you like as a competitor that, that is drawn at all to, to, to that? Like, like I, I hear everything that you're saying, but I also like, and maybe that's just something about like getting older and what you've accomplished in your career, but I think that's why people want to see it. It's like, they see it as like this great challenge. They want to see greatness challenge. Like, does that, does that entice you at all still? There's a part of it that does, but if I'm being completely honest, I feel like Tom's been such an asshole that I don't want to do business with him. You know, it's just like his fans have been so annoying. And obviously you don't get this far in, in a career being affected by fans or, or whatnot, but he, he's just an asshole, you know, with, with, with his, uh, with, you know, he's, he's 30. So he's from this influencer generation where you, you hop online and the t-shirt sells and all that. I'm past that type of stuff. I'm like, bro, if you had a little bit more respect, then maybe we could have worked something out, you know, but I just don't, I just don't even want to do business with him. You know, at the end of the day, this is a business. And fighting me gives him an opportunity to change his life forever. And I, I, I don't even want to give him the opportunity. Like, he, he, he just played his cards wrong with me personally. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm three years from being a 40-year-old grown man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I, I, the press conference, the, going through the whole shebang with him, I just, I'd rather not do. Pajeda on the other side, respectful, cool, barely says much. It's like, I, I'll do business with you. I, I would risk it all with a, with a human being like you. Uh, you. And you actually have the accolades to back up your shit. This other guy is just a big mouth who's hot today. There's been so many guys who's hot today who are just gone. You know, Sergey was in the same position not too long ago. Now he's starting to fall off already. I've just been around this sport too long to give a big mouth who's hot today the opportunity. All right, guys, thank you so much.